our first full episode on YouTube gets flagged by the North Korean government. That'd be an awesome story, though. Welcome to Spencer's, a podcast where we don't or have not yet currently had a guest who's a war criminal. I'm Haley O'Shaughnessy. And I'm Jordan Wiggins. First, let's do some housekeeping. Um, we're both wearing updos today. So that's probably first yes, and foremost. Um, <laughs> what else? Breaking news. We, uh, breaking news. It looks great. Which is funny because I just made a joke before that, of course, the first episode we're putting on YouTube, I look terrible. But I like to think the purple's saving me. You don't look terrible. And everyone run to our YouTube just to see the purple lipstick because it's worth it. Yes, that is in the It's Spencer's purple. Please follow <laughs> us on... Wait, do you say follow? Please subscribe to the YouTube. Um, yes. Shout out to Jackson Safan, who is working on our video and is so clever and makes someone who's terrible on video like me enjoy it. And also thanks to Harry, producer Harry. Um, Yeah, so please go subscribe. I don't know if you can like like or rate. You yeah? can do a thumbs okay. up, right? Yeah. You can do a thumbs up. Yeah, like all the videos. Okay. And guess what? If you want to say something that's mean, take it somewhere else. Yeah. Start journaling. Yeah. We're trying our hardest. Okay. I think that it's unavoidable, Jordan. We should probably talk about COVID. The vid. It's yeah. back. <laughs> it never left. <laughs> the vid. I feel it's like back that's... like it never left. Okay. Yeah. It didn't leave. Yeah. Okay. It, it never left. Um, okay, so I want to read the NBA is like making sort of new rules on the fly. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to read about those and then we can talk about it. It is, I mean, they're making new rules on the fly, I guess is a polite way of saying they still haven't stopped the season when like a great number <laughs> of players. That's a really nice way <laughs> of saying that. Yes. Have yes. COVID. They're so, making it up as they go. Mm -hmm. yep exactly um and hey anytime you can present something as giving opportunities to players who wouldn't otherwise have it if the nba can spin it they're gonna spin it mm -hmm. okay here's this is from a cbs article by sam quinn uh okay teams will be allowed to sign one replacement player for every player under contract that tests positive for covid19 the league will require teams to sign at least one player once two have, pes have tested positive. When a team has three players test positive, they will have to sign at least two players. And when they have four or more positive tests, they must sign at least three replacement players. So there's some more like the, the rules have changed for two-way players. They um, are no longer capped at 50 appearances with the NBA team. So typically that's the most that they can play if they're a two-way player in the actual league and then the rest of the season they have to play in the G League. Now they can play as much as they want, um, which is cool for teams that have good G League teams. Um, that was kind of wordy, but essentially you can sign players. Like this is the gig economy. This is part-time working has come to the NBA. This it's is nuts. the freelance idea, kind of. They're kind freelancing. Of. Yeah, you've, this all, is you've my actually freelance talked about idea. this for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do they stop playing once the player has recovered? I don't really – there's no clarity on that. Or if there is, I did have not read it. That's my question, too. And I, when I first saw this on Twitter, I actually read it as, like, you have a, a second roster – that then if somebody tests positive, then you call them up. But it seems like, based on what you just read, they can't sign them until after a player tests positive, right? So it's not like they have a list kind of ready to go. That's yeah, what's so confusing like, to me. How do you woo them? You know what I mean? Because right. if, 
so many teams have a bunch of players out right now that for once in their playing career, certainly if they just left the league like for once in the last three years, they finally have their choice. You know, like multiple teams will want them. This mm-hmm. just is like a fresh start for them. They get to be treated like a marquee free agent. And so you also just don't have a lot of time. Because I mean, that's the other thing. It's kind of weird. Like is immediate. I, yeah. Yeah, you need them or else the game will be postponed. And I know that the NBA does not want to postpone more games. So I don't know. It's kind of odd. I don't know if like any tampering rules apply to this, like with free agents. I guess not. It's not the off season, but I don't know. There's all kinds of things going through my mind that I think that they just have to rush through stuff so much that has not been considered. Mm -hmm. I think they purposely made it vague so that they can figure out the rest (laughs) when it comes up. (laughs) But that that is a little confusing. And I also think of it like, um, when you were saying like the G League teams, would they, if they're getting desperate enough and like, you know, they've had to postpone games because players, they can't even find eight players. Would they just have a team play a G League team? Would that ever happen? Just to fill the, the airtime? Yeah, because what if, like if you're the Raptors... Or who else has like a really good G League team? If you're a team that focuses on development, you care about your G League team, would you not, you know, like want them over players you could sign? Because think about who you could sign. I was thinking about it yesterday and Mm -hmm. I like fired off some players who came to mind and I realized that almost all of them played on the 2017-18 Cavs. (laughs) That year when LeBron just had like everybody, like every guard known to man that like was spit out of the NBA. I saw Michael Beasley. Who else did I see? Mm. Obviously, Isaiah Thomas is in the league, which is very funny that he's uh, made his way back. Yeah, made his way back. And I also like you have to have such a short memory of all the people who like semi slighted you, fully slighted you. Um, If you're Isaiah Thomas, like leave him alone. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, just don't be so mean when you cut ties because this is going to happen again. Yes, I agree. Anyway, I'm interested I think to it's see also, what players are actually signed. Yeah, me too. And when we talk about we don't want to stay on the vid too long because it can get depressing. But I think about all the games that are getting postponed and we're getting super close to Christmas. And I think about Christmas Day games and how it's like tradition in our family to watch Christmas basketball all day long. And not only is that in jeopardy, but it's also like the players won't be able to spend Christmas Day with their families like they have or if they have COVID or they're close to people that have had COVID like this is serious still. And I think it's also March 2020 when the league shut down. That was a wake up call for the rest of the world to be like, oh, my gosh, this is for real. All of these postponed games, all of these players going into COVID protocol is another wake up call like. Hello, it's still happening. It's still here. So I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but I wish that the league would press pause a little bit, get everyone healthy, but they're definitely not going to do that. We already know that. No, you're so right, because I always feel bad for the people who have to play on the players who have to play, the people who have to work, the arenas, et cetera, um, on Christmas Mm -hmm. Day. And they've talked about it before. They're like, yeah, it's not exactly what I want, Um, but if you are even if you weren't slated to play that day and you now have covid you still don't get to hang out with your family that blows i know it's a bummer i um not to get like all conspiratorial but you know how, <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> you know how teams will be normally non covid will be super super vague about injuries and sometimes mm-hmm. they make it sound like something else to cover up what it really is. Definitely. Because like, either they don't want their competition to know or they just don't want them to know um, like a, an actual timetable for returning. And I'm sure that every team would deny this, but it's every team does it. Um, okay. So I'm genuinely so cynical that I I don't know at what point – do they start the NBA realizes it's such a bad look 
to have all of these COVID cases that they start coming up with like fake reasons for being out for these what are being what out. are some fake reasons what are some fake reasons that you would actually buy like i'm trying to think it's sag season <laughs> everyone's flighty <laughs> during sag season that's like the number one you know quality trait of a sagittarius so i don't know like that the soulless that's a good one Havana mm. syndrome. The moon wasn't right today. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I was looking through and I was wondering if there's like any kind of common thread between the teams that had a lot of people out. Um, it was like Cavs, Nets have a lot. Uh, Celtics, mm-hmm. Bulls, Lakers, obviously. Um, Sixers too, right? I think Kings and Knicks. Yeah. And like uh, another <laughs> excuse they could do is like a communism. Like they could go full Ennis freedom and be like, look at all the teams with red jerseys. Look what all these teams have in common. Um, everyone's True. ankles been twisted at the same time. Critical race yeah. theory. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Yikes! Uh, the NBA yeah, is I, never gonna I let do me interview think, them again. <laughs> no, never. Not even close. Not never. even in the vicinity of any arena. But I think no. it's that. That's a good point. They're gonna start. They're gonna start getting creative. There's somebody's job right now that it's like, okay, you gotta come up with some some new injuries. Make it technical where people would have to Google and it would take them a little long to figure out what it actually is, and then we could buy ourselves some time. That's that's someone's job, an intern right now. <laughs> That's what yeah, they put on you, their desk. A hundred percent. And then I don't know like what you pay off the players maybe. I don't know. Because hmm. you think about like paying off a superstar is not going to work. You know what? They could do a Wilt Chamberlain Sixers agreement where the owner at the time when he was at the Sixers kind of said... Sorry, my dog. <laughs> Alfie. It sounded like uh, the dog was finishing your <laughs> Yes. <laughs> what was I talking about? Will. Will Chamberlain. Okay, Will Chamberlain, when he first went to the Sixers, he had this deal with the owner at the time, who I can't think of his name right now, where it was like under the table, kind of like hush-hush, that he could have a percentage of the team when he retired because they got along so well and he was just so valued. Obviously, it didn't happen because the owner passed away and a new owner came in, and that's actually why he demanded to be traded to the Lakers. But yeah, I mean, there you go. Like The NBA really doesn't want to shut down. Maybe they'll give like a some kind of stock or percentage or something. NFT. Mm. Yeah, some crypto dot com something. Yeah. I mean it's the whole thing. I'm not even gonna go down that road. I know Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know what I'm talking about. Still don't know. Um <laughs> still don't know. <laughs> and if you wanna tell me, just don't. I don't care. <laughs> um yes, okay. exactly. I have a game for us to play. Then this is the Yay. last COVID thing we'll talk about. Um, okay, the game is called Lineup Game because I didn't have a chance to think of a title <laughs> that was cuter. Um, that was good, actually. Lineup actually, game. you know what it can be is uh, two truths and a lie. Oh, but there's more. Well, okay, whatever. Two truths and a lie. I'm going to list off. Two truths in a lineup. <gasps> Two truths in a lineup. That's good. That's really good. Okay. This is, this is why we pay Harry the big bucks. That's good. Yes. That's good. That is really good. Um, Okay. I'm going to name three lineups, and you have to tell me at the end of it who I'm, which lineup I made up. And these are lineups over the last week um, because okay. so many players have been out with covid I like I need to take notes in protocols okay um no it's only three okay number one is a bucks lineup okay so you have 
Javante Smart, Sandro Mamu Kelishvili, Jordan Nora, Demarcus Cousins, and George Hill. So you don't have to answer right now. You can hear the other ones. Um, okay. I do want you to just think on how that makes any fucking sense as a lineup, but right. (laughs) That's (laughs) got it. Okay. The second one is the Denver Nuggets. So we've got Mm -hmm. Davon Reed, Bones Highland, Mm -hmm. uh, fuck, Facundo, Campasso. This is like should be easy. That sounds good. Because I think he's Italian. But no, those names are hard. Thank you. Um, Facundo Campasso. Nailed it. Aaron Gordon. Oh, and Jeff Green. I almost said or Jeff Green, but that doesn't even make sense. So you've got Davon. And Jeff Green. Bones. Okay. Yeah, Facundo. Aaron Gordon. Jeff Green. Okay. okay. The last... And almost, le- yeah, probably least lineup is coming from the Nets. You've got Patty Mills, Kessler Edwards, Cameron Thomas, David Duke, literally still the most unfortunate name ever, um, and Blake Griffin. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what? <laughs> I know. I'm amazed at this point he hasn't requested people. You have people to like- change your name. Yeah. You you bad. have to put a request to change your name. If your name is David Duke, yikes. Just change it to like Danny or Very something. Or I wonder what his middle um, name is. He could probably go by his middle name. But even maybe he's Dave. To like, like Dave. Just go by uh, DD, you know? That's really bad. Yeah. DD. DD. Definitely. Okay. That that threw me for a loop. What was the lineup again? I got really sidetracked at that. <coughs> just hearing it in a normal conversation just really threw me. Okay. So you've got Patty, Kessler Edwards, Cameron Thomas, Dee Dee, and Blake Griffin. Okay. So you've got the Nets, the Nuggets, okay. the Bucks. Which lineup is fake? And there's one there's only one mm-hmm. that's fake? Mm-hmm. Because I know you, you would try to trick me. Okay. I know. I was planning on not telling you that. And then two truths and a lineup was too good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's a good one. Okay. Um, My guess is these are all so bad. It <laughs> really just show the state of the NBA right now. Um, I'm going to say the Bucks one is fake. That one's real. Isn't that nuts? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, so the Marcus Nuggets, Cousins, the two? <laughs> the, nu- <laughs> the Nuggets is the fake one. Luckily, I don't think any Nuggets oh, are in the protocols, wow. but that could probably change by the time this episode comes out. Lucy! Hush! Oh, she's so cute. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to yell. Um, I thought <laughs> we would give it away with the Nuggets is that that's like a... Th- Lucy? She maintains eye contact like, okay, hold on a second. Yeah, you. (laughs) That was probably the most country thing she said. Lucy, hush. You know what's funny is I caught myself (laughs) saying. It was a hush. Saying, uh, when I said read off bones, I said Highland. It's just like Highland. You know what I mean? But it's like. Oh. Highland? Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Isn't his name like Nashawn? Nashawn? I don't know. Bones Highland? is way cooler. Like, honestly. Way cooler. <laughs> talk to David. Encourage yeah. him to just use a nickname. Um, Dee Dee. I, I think I saw in one of his. Yeah. I think I saw in one of his interviews where he said something like, I want to reverse the perception of the name. Or, like, maybe I made that up. But. You don't have to carry all that. That is a really, yeah, that's an uphill battle, dude. You know how Why would you put that on yourself? T- literally top 100 to, I mean, that man, history remembers no. that man. You know what I mean? <laughs> like for no. worse or for worse. But no. yeah, you're going to like, <laughs> you, the chances of you breaking through and I just listed you in one of the, wor- uh, like a, as a joke in a lineup. No offense. I don't want to be mean, but I'm just saying you don't have to do it. Don't put that on yourself. 
You don't have to do that. Imagine, I think of like LeBron James being like, I, I hate that I named my son LeBron because mm-hmm. that's too much to like Pressure. live up to. And they named him David Duke. And that's just too much to try to reverse the both same scenario of like you should he goes by Bronny go by Dave or just DD or DD. something else please so anyway that's the game you're a winner I lost good because game. I yeah because I love you and that's enough for me <laughs> to be a winner um that's enough <laughs> COVID what are you calling it the vid that's funny because I keep calling it I'm still on Miss Rona, which I just was a early, a very early on nickname, but I think one of the best. Kind of gives her like hmm. a friendlier. That's a good one. Yeah. Like how people use uh, Aunt Flo for their period. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Even that's true. are nice. Yeah. Um, you know, time's I'm going with the vid, though. That seems like a, that seems like it matches the, the sometimes scariness of it. Yeah, because Miss Rona is like sounds like a fun substitute teacher. Sounds like exactly. Miss Frizzle. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Do you want to talk about players who could get traded? Yes. <laughs> Even though you know I'm I'm allergic to the trade that machine was, and all that is. A that part was so of delayed. Trades. <laughs> I was like, wow, I thought we planned on this, but we don't have to. No, we do. Uh, We do. We do. Because, but you know how I feel. I've said this multiple times that trades aren't my forte, but we're getting close to the trade deadline. And I love how Harry put it in the rundown. Most fun places to see these players when the trade trade deadline happens. So that's how I approached it. What would be fun if you saw these players on a different team, that's what got I me through it. I did not see that word in the <laughs> run now. So I'm going to have to think on the fly here. Um, okay. Who do you want to do first? Well, you can give, I can give the fun. I can give the fun because I feel like you would probably have the actual trade, like what players would need to swap out and all of that. I'm, purely went on fun so that's that's me that's probably right I feel after like this this matches a converse, <laughs> that's probably right after i blamed i said the nba is gonna pin havana syndrome on its players so you're probably the happier one of us here uh okay who do you want to do first um let's do some bonus <laughs> I, feel I like actually have a lot of kind of been about floating about around. Okay, okay, tell me. Let's tell him. me what let's your hear. fun take. My fun take is that he goes to the Celtics, and I know our video producer Jackson's happy about that. But I think he goes to the Celtics. They really, they just need like a kickstart. They need something, and I think a big three with him, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum would actually be fun and i feel like he would be welcomed in in boston so i I think it'd be fun for sabonis um no offense jackson i don't know if i would call boston fun celtics yeah boston fun (laughs) just overall if you want to yeah that's fair fly me out change my mind all right We'll see. Um, but I also don't think it'd be fun to be on the Celtics right now. Like, they're not having a good time. They haven't been having a good time mm. for some time now. So, I don't. But, again, I, you know, it would be nice and fun for him to, like, be the thing that turns the team around. Yes. That's what I That's what I mean. <clears throat> that's fair enough. Um, I think this is interesting because the Pacers were basically, like, Hey man, we're starting over. Yes. And then <laughs> we're going to re- 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 Yeah. And then their owner a couple of days ago, Herb said, "Ha, ah, just kidding." He said, "Hang on, let me pull up the quote." He it was so contradictory. Like I don't really Hang on, I know I have it. 
Dun, 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 dun. Yep, here it is. Okay, he said, I don't believe our fans deserve to see a team that's purposefully losing. I mean, yeah, it sucks, but you've also been giving them a team that's trying to win and is still losing. So at least the losing would feel intentional and like be a push towards something. Like, honestly, what's the point right now? It's just you're just losing. Oh, this is another thing. So you're saying it would be better to watch them intentionally lose? Yes. Something to cheer for. We're we're going towards something. Yeah. I also thought this was funny. Herb said, if you remember going back to Donnie Walsh, we always built without tearing down. We built on the go and we can do the same thing again. First of all, okay, if you remember way before we were born, Donnie Walsh had two terms running the Pacers. The last one was 2012-13. And before that, it was like a long time from the 80s to the early 2000s. The thing that even... I, not being alive in 87, know about Donnie Walsh because this is like known as his best move ever, his best decision in charge of a team or in charge of this team is that he drafted Reggie Miller in 1987. I don't remember who he drafted him over. I don't know. Harry, can you check that? It was like something that was controversial at the time. Reggie Miller was 11th. And for some reason, he took him. He felt right about that. And that's what he's been applauded. Donnie Walsh, like that is his marquee decision that like everyone will remember him by. Mm -hmm. From And Reggie Miller saved the team. Like from the majority of his career, I think literally a year after. I meant to look this up. A year after his, he was drafted all the way until like a couple years before he retired, Reggie Miller had the highest win shares on that team, which doesn't mean everything. But if you look at like how much success they had, he's such an important part of all of it. And I mean, it's fair to say Donnie Walsh also made other decisions like kind of on the fly, more like Herb was alluding to because he traded for Jermaine O'Neal. He traded for Jalen Rose. They got to the NBA Finals with, like, toward the end of Reggie's career in 2000. Um, But, yeah. I mean, but still, this is my ultimate point. Donnie Walsh. I can't believe I haven't even gotten to Sabonis yet. I'm sorry. Donnie Walsh came before tanking existed. He also had a lottery pick in Reggie Miller that worked out and saved the franchise. Jordan, how do you get lottery picks in a year such as 2022? (laughs) You have to tank. You tank, right? And also, like, it's just the logic is confusing me because in 1986, the Pacers finished. uh, This would also be nice for you to look up. I think sixth worst in the NBA because I looked this up, like, the other day when I saw uh, Herb's comments, but... I don't know. It was just, I thought that that was very rich. Um, rich text. I'm looking up who Harry sent this. The No, I don't think it was any of them on that screenshot. Anyway, um, yes. So for Sabonis, I did not see the Celtics. I saw, I think, the Knicks, the Mavs, Charlotte, Boston based on fun. It would be fun to save them. I think you could have that same fun in Dallas. Dallas is all, they're also Mm -hmm. probably the most desperate for change. Like the Knicks obviously need change, but I don't know. They only have Kemba on a two-year deal. Julius Randle is not having a, the season we wanted him to, but he's also young Mm -hmm. and who knows? And do you really want to commit? I don't know. Um, I think that, Maybe it would be something that the Pacers would be interested in if they only committed to tanking because you could take Kemba's two years on. With the Mavs, I'm like, sell on Kristaps while he's playing well. This will not last. Have we not learned anything? You know what I mean? And these That's tiny That's a really tweaks, good point. Yeah. They do not work. Like, go with a proven commodity. I That's – the Mavs are what I want for him. I think I saw so much of how can the Mavs keep Porzingis – 
But I like what you said more. Like, get get them out and maybe you can capitalize. And Sabonis is way more uh, consistent. <laughs> yeah, 100%. He can do more things. Um, way more reliable. Yeah. Okay, who do you want to talk about next? Who's 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 fun um, are you putting? Whose life are you putting fun into? Oh my god! Sure, that sounds good. Out. Siakam, I like Pascal, Pascal Siakam, and not that I ever, ever, ever want the Clippers to get better or have fun, but I think he fits well on the Clippers. I think that I've seen that floated around a few times, even back in like August, I think they were talking about that. And so I've always liked that idea. It's kind of unfortunate too with, it's a little bit of the same thing happening in Indiana with the Raptors. They're like, "Mm, we need some, we need a switch up here. We, I think we should probably float some things around. We're going to run with Van Vliet. (laughs) That's what I feel like the Raptors are going for right now. But having him go back and play with Kawhi, the fun guy. I think they can have some fun together again. Yeah, I mean, they did play really well together. That was the year where I think everyone took notice of Siakam because um, he was such a good number two. Mm-hmm. Whereas before, I don't think anyone believed he could be a number two or even like maybe knew much about him. Um, I I hope that the Raptors, and I'm not really sure what the temperature on this is from Raptors fans, but... I hope that because they did experience winning so recently that they're not in a rush. Like sometimes you just have underwhelming Mm -hmm. seasons. But the great thing about the Raptors is that they consistently produce players who could be a good fit anywhere. So, yeah, actually, I just don't want Siakam to be traded at all. I think that would be a mistake. I think Harry pushed for us to include this one because he's a Warriors fan. And the Warriors would benefit. And they've and been, that's yeah. Mm-hmm. The big rumor. So, very yep. interesting. But we're not going to give you the satisfaction, Harry. <laughs> yeah, look at his face. He definitely, that's what it was. Which is fine. But no, <laughs> keep him. That would be such a mistake. In yeah, my opinion. I agree. I agree. Which is just usually right. Um, Who do you want to do next? Um, do we have to do Ben Simmons? I think we do. I think we do. He's getting flowed around, but I think we need a timer. Like we have to put a timer on how long we talk about this and it's probably going to be less than a minute. <laughs> how long we talk about and I, ben You got Simmons? the timer, Harry? <laughs> yes. Wait, how long is the timer? One minute. Okay. okay. Mine is going to be really quick. I think Ben Simmons should go wherever makes him happy. I think that's it. You know why? Because I'm over talking about it. (laughs) There's so many teams in the mix. There's so many players. We have to bring up Daryl Morey and what he wants and how this could last for four more years. I don't think it's going to happen before the trade deadline anyway. But he should go wherever makes him happy. And 35 seconds. Go, Haley. Um, Okay, so Brian Windhorst said it would be either mini Houston, Sacramento, and then between the three of those and Philly, it would be a quote quadrangular trade, which means that there might be like more than one involved. First of all, like Brian, we're not sweet prince, words. don't Come make on. me Google a word. Like is this succession? I feel embarrassed. You know, you didn't have to do that to me, but whatever. Oh, Ben Simmons. Um, I feel like Minneapolis, he'd be unhappy, so cold. Oh, okay. time's up. I'm t- <laughs> Sorry. Quadrangular trade sounds like you trade a square. <laughs> I know. I was confused. I did it in a private browser. I was, like, embarrassed. Um, I didn't want anyone to see that in my history. Can I just say... Uh, because <laughs> we can end up we're gonna end up talking about him for the rest of the podcast we can't Haley. No, we can't do not. it <laughs> you're okay. you want to say something so bad but we we can't yeah we can't we okay. have to move on That's we have fine. to move on to cj 
which you could if you were sly enough you could wiggle <clears throat> ben simmons back into into I, the cj talk but that's okay i was honestly gonna bring up the rockets but also in a way that pertained to ben simmons so we can move on wait we can move on. We could do we it. We can do on. it. It's taking all yeah. of us, all of our might to move on. But we can. We can. Okay. CJ, what are your thoughts? Where do you see him land? Okay. Honestly, I really did want him to move because I don't think anyone's happy right now on the Blazers. I think everyone feels a bit stuck. Um, but mm-hmm. he has a collapsed lung right now. That is so worrisome to me. Like, that just sounds not even for an athlete, for anyone, really scary for someone who has to use their lungs at like a more active rate, um, which is probably Mm -hmm. how doctors say it uh, for sure. That didn't just sound really stupid. Um, That's even scarier. You know what I mean? So before that happened, it was what the Sixers, obviously, for reasons that we will not talk about. Um, the Pacers, the Raptors, like the same teams we've been talking about, the same teams that I said shouldn't. Like the Pacers should rebuild. Don't take on someone like C.J. McCollum. The, yeah, with the Raptors would probably involve Siakam. I don't think they should trade Siakam. So, like basically, I think this is the third person I've said on this list. Like, maybe not trade them. (laughs) That's what I put too. I think he stays, one, because of that injury I don't know if people would be like running to trade him, um, but I think he wants to stay in Portland and I think he wants to be a part of the rebuild. I know it's really shitty right now in everything that's going on with that team, but I think he wants to be a part of when the success eventually happens because he's been through the ringer with them. So that's my pick too. I don't think they move him. Um, I think he stays. That would be the smart thing to do. Yeah. Which, you know, that does suck for him. But maybe it's just at the end of this season. Maybe it just takes longer and they find a good mutual fit. I don't know. That's true. Yeah, that's true. I hope so. Just any time a player is injured with something that sounds so serious that also doesn't sound like an everyday thing that NBA players have. Like, I'm not trying to minimize an ACL tear or like a – Right. Some kind of bone contusion at all. But anytime it's kind of a a more unfamiliar territory or something more rare, I just it's just scary. So Mm -hmm. I hope that they just take their time with him and don't rush anything. Don't rush. Don't rush. It's like the don't rush. Don't rush challenge. Okay. So the last thing we want to talk about very quickly is there was an article in The Athletic that went over um, a plan, a proposed plan, I should say, during the Obama administration to send Steve Kerr over to North Korea to talk to um, Kimmy. (laughs) And I, yeah, it's they wanted to send him over to play pickup with him because apparently um, Kim Jong Un loves basketball. But then also Steve Kerr was like, yeah, but he also he knew nothing about this plan. And then apparently yeah, I think that's found the funniest out, part. Oh, it's hilarious. Um, also, very interesting that they chose him. He's a Bulls fan. Uh, Kimmy is a Bulls fan, so that's why they were like. In the article, they they were like, well, could we do Michael? Uh, he did say in the last dance that Republicans buy shoes, too. <laughs> and he's not really into politics, so scratch him off. And so then they eventually landed on Steve Kerr because he is involved in politics and he won championships with the Bulls. He's, so so he's I thought that was funny, the process elimination. He's 37, so I'm like, you. It's it is interesting that it makes sense that he would be a Bulls fan. They were having a good time in the 90s. Um, but, yes, also I want to shout out the author on that because it is such a bizarre piece to have found out about. Um, so I'm sure that was excellent <laughs> reporting by Alex Schiffer. Um, yeah, it's weird. Steve Kerr apparently didn't find out until this month. Um, yeah. Obama was like, 
no <laughs> politely <laughs> politely <laughs> respectfully no um which is probably for the best because if you are so competitive that you are on championship teams you do not let someone win and if there's one thing we know about that family it's that they like to quote unquote win this golfing is like his dad golfed a what they say it in the article i don't know something that like pretty like perfect score yeah, even for a professional golfer. <laughs> yeah, literally did flag not make hole. any sense. Um, flag and hole. <laughs> flag and hole. Um, Just had to bring that up. My favorite part about the article was this like one small section where uh, it says, if Kim wanted to talk business, Kerr would step aside and let Obama's National Security Council handle it. If Kim wanted to shoot hoops with Kerr, at least American officials could get a feel for him and his people. And I just thought that was funny because I took it as like based off of his game. Like if he is shooting jumpers, then okay, this is what we're going to do to, uh, you know, talk to the government. I didn't really understand that line, but I'm <laughs> so not politics. And I went strictly to how is he playing? Is he driving? Is he, you know, is he purposely fouling, trying to put Kerr on the free throw line? Like, that's how I took it to that's how they're going to base, you know, how they approach. Like North he goes Korea. ISO. Every Don't think that's time. accurate. But and they're like, this guy's yeah. never going to work with us. Yeah. Right. Right. He's he shoots yeah. outside. So that, that's what, how I took it. But I thought what it was year was this? What year was this proposed? Well, I guess it was during the Obama administration. So, it was, you know, people were shooting outside then. First so if you shot yep. outside, it was like they were. What does that say about you? I don't know. I guess that your mouth guard's going to hang out. <laughs> oh, it's 2012 was anyway, when this was proposed. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like if you were shooting out, It was a great laugh. If he was shooting mid-range in 2012, it probably meant what they could take from that is that this guy doesn't understand what's coming. And they could take advantage of that. Like, he's not really sure what's coming next, what the next wave would be. They could get a step ahead of mm. him. Now, if he's shooting from the three-point line, all of a sudden they're like, this guy, A, has balls. B is like six or, sorry, is like five, like two or something. It has way too much ego because, <laughs> like, Steve Kerr is yeah. a, way above this. Not way above the sixes. I don't know. Six, six two? three. Six, oh, he's three. six three. Oh, Okay. I didn't know that. I thought he was like 6'1". Um, yeah, if you're shooting with him guarding you from deep, that's that's a loose cannon. It's too much confidence. And Run if there's away. one thing we don't know about Kim, is is he a loose cannon? We just aren't really sure all the way in 2022. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm glad you didn't go, Steve. I don't know if you would have had a good time. I don't think you would have. <laughs> don't put me in that position. And he straight up no. said, he was like, I would not have done it unless President Obama asked me, like, this is for our country. <laughs> Please go play horse with Kimmy in North Korea for America. I'm not doing it if anyone asked me. No. Oh, no. Sorry, Obama. <laughs> No, <laughs> that's a tough to ask. That is a tough ask. Wow, I, I just had flashbacks yeah. of people saying thanks, Obama, for everything in like 2009. I just had flashbacks to my what a time. What grade was I? In? I must. Oh, I was in ninth grade. I was a freshman, and yep. I remember that. I think I, we were the only left-leaning people in my entire high school, which was also just like. 150 people so demographically made sense <laughs> anyway it was a deep sigh no i wouldn't i wouldn't <laughs> do went it. all the way back to 2009 <laughs> sorry obama oh, okay i'm gonna well, think on who i think I would, that's who i would do it who i would say yes for but it's not obama it's sue bird ask you <sighs> if sue bird was like Haley, <sighs> this is this is what we need. We have to do this. K 
can I have she's her bo- hand she's in really marriage? About it. <laughs> can I have her hand in marriage after? <laughs> it depends. The There's stipulation on your face. Can we have a oh secret wedding and then not tell anyone for two years? Because it's super cool. And then also we have a baby on the way. That was a Candace Parker reference. Maybe. I'm not that strange. Although, whatever she wants, honestly. <laughs> but I, I couldn't play Kim in basketball. I was cut in like sixth grade. It would have to be something but else. You would, they were going to let him win anyway. So yeah, you didn't like, have why, to. There's no reason for me. Like, you know what I mean? There'd have to. You know what I am good for? A game of charades. Okay. If okay. Kim wanted to play charades with me, but that's the thing about me is I would not let him win. So that would be tough. You would have like America is riding on this. You would play. You would be asked by Sue Bird to go to North Korea and play Kim Jong Un in charades for America. So you have to let him win. You know how competitive I that am. That sounds like a movie. Honestly, I would I would watch that. <laughs> What was the Seth Rogen movie? They the interview. About? Yeah. Honestly, like for how much flack that movie got, they should have made the title sexier because I don't remember it. Like, why don't you make it something like as controversial as the movie was? The interview. That could be about anything. There was that like Meryl Streep movie that came out about she was in the government or something that was like so boring. No offense, Meryl. That. That should have been called the interview. You know what I mean? You just forget it. Anyway, maybe we should log off and take a nap. Okay. We both want to take a nap. <laughs> Harry said you'd well, have Kim our on show. spinsters. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've I tried don't, to I end it probably we, like five times. <laughs> we actually have a pretty good one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she, Jordan's tried to end this for the last 20 minutes. I, I think our track record of not having any war criminals on spinsters has been so strong. I don't want to start now. That's fair. Also, I don't feel confident he'd be able to figure out a Zoom recording. Also, he ki- he kills a lot of people. I don't think he'd do our intro justice. I think that yeah, would what be- would he do for our intro? <laughs> Welcome to <laughs> Spencer's that podcast. That would be the wonder. thing. <laughs> A podcast where I'm personally where the bulls six four. Rule. <laughs> <laughs> where I have a great personality. Everyone loved me. Welcome to Spencer's, where I definitely did not get a facelift. <laughs> <laughs> he got a facelift and a BBL. Google it. I'm dead serious. Kim Jong Un got a BBL and a facelift. I'll send you pictures right now. Okay, I won't interrupt you this time. <laughs> Okay, that's uh, our no, show. <laughs> I'm oh my gosh, there's like a slight delay in our recording, so every time I've tried to end it, she just comes right back in. <laughs> <laughs> Something else. Um, but please keep leaving us your takes. Would, who would it take to ask you to go to North Korea that you would go? That's a genuine question that I hope you answer on our voicemail at 502-874-4453 or send us an email with details at spinsters at bluewirepods.com to be featured on the show. Spinsters is hosted by me, Haley O'Shaughnessy, and Jordan Liggins. This episode was produced by Jordan, Isabel Jocelyn, Harry Krinsky, and Alex Ward. Our production coordinator is Devin Shepard, and our executive producers are Peter Moses, John Yales, and me. Hi, uh, this is Matt from San Antonio, Texas, and for the love of Christ, please, please, I don't want the Spurs to draft the dude from Spain, but they're going to do it, and my franchise will be in poverty for the next 10 years. Thank you. Goodbye.